Hello and welcome to SMB Connect Spotlight, a special show to promote and highlight SMB businesses and its ecosystem. The series is in continuation of SMB Connect eBook Game Plan 2021 Vision 2025, where experts from different professions, uh, government officials, and business leaders will be sharing their views and expertise. As part of SMB Connect, we have organized over 100 knowledge sessions across India. And I've done multiple online engagement as part of developing local businesses. We have launched a website www.localandvocal.online where businesses can list their services. This offer is free as of now. Please subscribe to, uh, to our YouTube channel, details of which are available below to know the latest development in the SME space. Good evening. We at SMB Connect are very proud to launch the ebook Game Plan 2021. Vision 2025. My esteemed guest today, Dr. P. Anbalagan, has shared his view on how Magnetic Maharashtra 2.0 can be a game changer in reviving industry in Maharashtra. A small introduction before I talk to uh, Dr. Uh, and get his views about his article. Dr. P. Anbalagan is the Chief Executive Officer of MIDC, popularly known as Maharashtra Industrial Development Corporation, a government of Maharashtra. He has played a key role in the strategic oversight, management, and execution of key institutional reforms to make MIDC one of the India's largest and most prominent land development corporation and leading investment promotion agencies. He is also concurrently served as director on the boards of Nagpur Mass Transport Company, Private Limited, Maharashtra Airport Development Company Limited, Aurangabad Industrial Township Limited, Nagpur. Mumbai Super Communication Expressway Limited, Head Economic Infrastructure Limited, Syscom, MPCB, and MPCL for last 18 years and has held several key port profiles such as Estate Collector of Solapur and Karad, CEO Jilla Parishad, Nand Darbar, Collector and District Magistrate of Ahmednagar, Joint Chief Executive Officer of MITC, Mumbai Controlling Land Revenue Management and District Administration. Member Secretary, Maharashtra Pollution Control Board. Welcome, sir, and thanks for your time to share uh, your views about MIDC and how MIDC is working towards reviving the industry in Maharashtra. So my first question to you about the article, sir, you're talking about MIDC. Uh, uh, there are a lot of initiatives taken by the government. I would like to understand what are the leading initiatives taken by MIDC in supporting the MSME segment, particularly in the state of Maharashtra. See, ma, first of all, I thank uh, SMBC Connect, uh, in particular to, I think, uh, Sandeep Andre, your good sir, for this opportunity to share what exactly the state and the MIDC is doing to like make the state again in the front runner and also to retain the first space uh, as far as the industrial uh, growth is concerned. Coming to like SME, uh, MSME sector, the state has almost, uh, I would say, close to more than 15 lakh MSMEs. Out of that, almost close to 2 lakh MSMEs are already in operation and another 1.5 lakh are maybe starting their operations soon. So it's close to around, I would say, 30% of the MSMEs are in manufacturing and 70% are in various support service sectors. And I would say, like, I would proud to share with you that it, it employs close to 80 lakh people. For example, if it's a mega project comes, suppose if somebody is investing 500 crore, it will be like a maximum employment will be like 500. It's one is to one or maybe sometime even less because of the automation. But MSME has a range of like from almost to one to almost 30. Somebody is investing one crore and it can employ 30 people. So that way it has employed close to 80, like 8, 8 million uh, people uh, in Maharashtra. And the investment to the tune of 2.13 uh, lakh crore is also through MSME sector in our state. The Maharashtra Industrial Policy 2019, uh, which was like unveiled uh, last year, has a lot of uh, incentives for uh, MSME sector. Very specific to that, uh, the state categorizes area into D plus, D, C, B, and A, depending on their, uh, I would say, level of development. For example, D plus is the, I would say, places like Gatshiroli, Nandurva, they come in D plus. So you you are you are going to like uh, get maximum incentives in. Uh, I would say the undeveloped area and relatively reasonable incentives in uh, developed area. 
the incentives for msme has a uh, lot of uh, like component one is like gross sgst uh, i would say the refunds which are based on the fixed capital investment which can vary from like maybe 30 percent it can go up to 60 to 70 percent depending on the area that is one thing and there is also interest subvention and you also have a power subsidies and in places like uh, Vidarbha and Maratwada, you also have power tariff concession in other places, power uh, duty. So these are the major component uh, where uh, the state is trying to pitch in. Secondly, in all the newly uh, coming, I think, uh, I think the areas which are being developed in the near future, the MSME sector will have a 20% reservation of all the total plots. Suppose if I am developing 1,000 hectares, uh, so 200 hectares will be earmarked for MSME and they will be allotted through an online process, transparent process in the new places, not through a bidding, through an online process based on the quality of the DPR and other things, they will also be done. They will be given land. More than that, you also have a like Government of India Atman Nirbhar uh, Bharat scheme where you have a credit guarantee scheme and also subordinated for uh, basically NPR trusted MSME and also creation of funds of funds and particularly disallowance of like global tenders in government procurement to promote local uh, purchases and clearance of all the dues including the whatever incentives uh, are there so these are the some of the initiatives which are taken by uh, state government and also by uh, government of india uh, thanks sir uh, so there are a lot of incentives available uh, for the government from the government and uh, but my question is, uh, can you just elaborate what are the most consumed benefit of MIDC and all the industry department initiatives that organizations or industries are, are using it and are taking advantage of this? I would say uh, if, I, if we go through uh, like a most uh, consumed incentive in the sense one is like an infrastructure. When you compare other states or maybe other uh, industrial development corporations, uh, our uh, MIDC, I would say, stays at much, much high pedestal because of its long-standing experience. And it has, a, I would say, normally, I would say, that it has an executional matrix skill, basically. It has, like, land, it has, I would say, uh, the ESA doing business, it has an infrastructure, and also the power to market and, of course, the vendor base. So on that, I would say, the, our lands are being heavily subsidized. So, for example, even Pune or Chaken, I would say the rate, land rates in the open market is 8,000 per square meter and our lands are placed somewhere between 4,700, almost like 7 to 80% in some places and in other places it's almost more than 100% less in other places. So it's a land is one big thing which uh, the state heavily subsidizes uh, because uh, the state strives to have an organized and uh, balanced development across the state. This is one thing. Second is the quality of input. Second is the water. The state runs, particularly MLDs, runs uh, water supply scheme uh, to the volume of 2,500 MLD. If you take a statistics from maybe uh, states which are adjoining states, they have to depend on uh, either urban local bodies or gram panchayat or that. So we run our own scheme. For example, in Mumbai alone, Mumbai, I mean, this since uh, MMR alone, excluding Mumbai, MLDC supplies close to around 1,200 MLD, excluding Tarapu. Out of the 70% of the water is going for domestic and 30% is going for uh industry that is what the capacity which madc has it so the water if you talk to some other state that they are being priced at 80 rupees per cubic meter 50 rupees per cubic meter our maximum land is nothing more than 20 22 rupees and some places it is even less than uh, like seven eight rupees so we call only economic rate the economic rate uh the state the madc uh, gives supplies the water at economic rate not at the commercial rate so even we do supply uh, water for the housing projects outside the state. And third, now the state is also doing a power infrastructure. So these are the, I, I would say, impact of like infra infrastructure, these are the three major component. And fourth will be, this is the only state, uh, the only organization which operates common effluent treatment plants and also uh, common hazardous waste treatment and disposal facility. Both for hazardous chemical also we operate with, um, uh, units, facilities either through BOT and CETPs, which we do operate at some places and some places the association is being given and it, they are also being heavily subsidized where more than 80% of the capital comes from the state. So that way operating cost for MSME or even for the larger unit in our state is much, much cheaper than in other states, particularly water, 
ట్రీట్మెంట్ ఛార్జెస్ ఫర్ ద సివేజ్ ట్రీట్మెంట్ ఛార్జెస్ ఫర్ ద ఎఫ్లుయెంట్ అండ్ ఈవెన్ దీవెన్ ద సర్వీస్ ఛార్జెస్ దే ఆర్ సర్వీస్ ఛార్జెస్ ఆర్ లైక్ వేరింగ్ ఫ్రమ్ ఫోర్ రూపీస్ టు నైన్ టెన్ రూపీస్ పర్ స్క్వయర్ మీటర్ దట్ ఈస్ నథింగ్ కెన్ బి కంపేర్ విత్ ఈవెన్ ప్రైవేట్ ప్లేయర్స్ ఆర్ ఈవెన్ అదర్ స్టేట్స్ సో దట్ వై దిస్ ఇస్ ద వన్ థింగ్ వేర్ ద ఇన్ఫ్రాస్ట్రక్చర్ ఈస్ బీయింగ్ మేజర్లీ అట్రాక్టివ్ అండ్ పీపుల్ ఆర్ బీ లైక్ దిస్ ఇస్ అ మేజర్ ఐటమ్ ఐ వుడ్ సి దన్స్యూమ్ సెకండ్ ఈస్ అఫ్ కోర్స్ ద ప్యాకేజ్ స్కీమ్ ఆఫ్ ఇన్సెంటివ్స్ ద ఇన్వెస్ట్మెంట్ ప్రమోషన్ సబ్సిడీ దే కాల్ ఐపీఎస్ ఇన్వెస్ట్మెంట్ ప్రమోషన్ సబ్సిడీ విచ్ ఈస్ లైక్ ద స్టేట్ హెస్ అ మాక్సిమం బడ్జెట్ వెన్ యూ కంపేర్ టు అదర్ స్టేట్స్ and state also has a commitment to whatever like guarantee or whatever commitment given so the state also i would say it it uh, it is satisfying the needs of the uh, industries and also investors by giving the timely payment bearing uh, the period during the covid otherwise by and large uh, these but whatever guaranteed is also like commitment is been like followed uh, severely uh, vigorously by the state so in the investment promotion subsidy i would say it's a major attraction because this is the only state i would say maybe there are very few states which has on record as mentioned that they are giving a package scheme of incentives or investment promotion subsidy on a gross gst basis on a gross gst basis and thirdly i would say as far as uh, sectors from like electronics and other things are concerned their benchmark investment is like been reduced to like for example if somebody is qualifying as a mega project uh, for example like 5500 crore here anybody investing 250 crore also qualify as a mega project so that way certain sectors like uh, food processing textile textile machinery uh, bulk drag uh, also uh, i would say electronic they are been like uh, thrust sector where even the benchmark investment is also been uh, reduced Uh, that way the gst is a major component like uh, gst refunds is a major component where most of the industries are uh, benefited even like uh, in major industries steel even see state covers almost all the gambit even now the data center is also being covered particularly for a construction phase the gst refunds are being like proposed i think uh, this is one thing only i, I, I realized but what you talking about like what you need you need land you need water and you need treatment of your uh, equipment or waste management if if you are providing that that's a great incentive for any organization to come up and set up a outlet or factory in 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 a, in, in a place like maharashtra i think there you guys at uh, uh, midc and at uh, you particularly sir must be doing a great job on that uh, i think it's the what is the road map for establishing because the maharashtra maybe like is, is is one of the key industrial state for india but you definitely have a road map for the next two years to make uh, is one of the key leading industrial state in the world and how does uh, the role of mdc come in picture and where does your role as as a ceo comes in picture see for, even now the state accounts for close to something uh, not less than 16% of the national gdp industrial productivity and also when we look at exports also close to around 20 and 22% somewhere between 20 and 22% the state like is always either uh, one fifth or one sixth of everything though the land mass is like 10% of the country and population also quite like a 10% of the country we contribute like fda we contribute almost uh, one third for other places it's like a 20% be it in electrical components 20 to 25% auto component more than 30% so there are like more than 10 lead sectors where the state figures either top or maybe second or third so that way now we have like our uh, i would say brother states or sister states are also patching up uh, so the major thing which i am saying like is the, the quality of infrastructure which our state has done so we are taking that to a next level where this magnetic maharashtra has also promised uh, the plug and play infrastructure where particularly for msmes uh, in places like like nagpur uh, butiburi dinduri where like normally people are hesitant to go but they are very close to cities so to promote those areas we are also coming up with plug and play infrastructure where we are we are providing a ready to move in sheds work sheds with the like it's like with all the aesthetics and all the i would say plug and play infrastructure be it a light be it a sewage treatment uh, like uh, line uh, brush water uh, line also electricity at the doorstep and at the much much subsidized rentals much much subsidized rental for example somewhere if somebody is being charged around 20 22 rupees so we are we are like trying to give it at around 10 to 12 rupees so that way like rentals and even with the provision that uh, people should be able to own the facility during the course of the business when their cash flows or when their like profits grow 
So keeping in that mind, like you cannot like discount MSME because for as far as employment is concerned, uh, that has a major comp. I would say more than like uh, 50 to 60 percent of the employment comes from uh, MSME sector. So that way here the challenges are quite uh, huge. I would say, but it's nevertheless it can be like surmounted. It's not that you cannot like pass on, but we will we will be able to surely those uh, handle those challenges. One is like um, lands in major uh, demand areas. So major demand area, though we want to say that we should be able to provide them, um, uh, like um, we should be able to push industries to uh, most backward areas and other thing with a lot of incentives. But the companies coming from overseas with all that, they, they also want demand in the growth centers. For example, Nagpur, Amravati, Varada, Corridor is one where we have a land close to around more than 6,000 acres. So land bank is the main thing. So that is being developed. And uh, secondly, you come to Aurangabad. So there we have around 10,000 acres of land where smart city is being developed. Third, you come to uh, Malaygao, Nasik, Amanagar belt, Jalgao belt. There also you have more than 5,000 to 6,000 acres of land. Then Pune, Ranjangao, I would say Satara and Indapur, there are another 10,000 acres. Whereas in MMR and uh, other places, we are having more than like 20,000 acres of land as of now. So land is one thing. The second is, a, I would say, the sector-specific parks. Like we are coming up with specialty chemical park, bulk truck park, and also Talegav is being developed as a, uh, like... Uh, electronics and engineering uh, city and uh, manga which is a part of the digi uh, like delhi movement industrial corridor is also being developed as one of the smart city where you have uh, all the zones and it's going to be developed as a more like a smart city rather than as an industrial estate so the challenges is like people want land in these growth corridors where we should be able to accommodate and wherever the domestic demands there in the smaller places also we need to be uh, developing a smaller industrial clusters that way the state has 289 industrial estates across the state with this great roadmap we are also going ahead with the massive upgradation of environmental infrastructure we have we have uh, almost, I mean, another two to three years, we should be spending around close to 2,000 crore rupees in uh, expanding our uh, environmental infrastructure with uh, more than like 22, uh, from 20 to 50 kilometers of pipeline to marine outfalls and also zero liquid discharge facilities in places where the chemical uh, companies are there and also upgrading the existing uh, ETPs. Like now we have done uh, <clears throat> Taloja, then the Dombi Valley, Dombi Valley phase one, phase two, Ambalna, they are also being taken. Tarapur is being taken. Now even Lote, Mahad is being upgraded. Lol, Roha is being upgraded. So all those CETP which are having a marine discharge are close to coastal are also being upgraded. So that like all the sectors from food processing, textile, chemical, specialty chemical, even like fertilizers, even paper and pulp can be accommodated. So this is like a massive upgradation. Third also massive upgradation of our water uh, supply infrastructure. Like we are coming up with around more than 400 MLD water supply scheme in uh, Raigad. And similarly, we have recently commissioned the 80 MLD water supply scheme in Chakar and 72 MLD in Waluj, like Aurangabad, like Shindra Bidikin. And Butubiri also, we, are, we have recently uh, started working on like 30 MLD water supply scheme. And similarly for Nasik is also we are having a surplus water. So water is in one area and the effluent is in another area, third is a land. Fourth, the uh, MADC is also looking at uh, internal electric infrastructure. Hitherto, we were depending on MSEDC and another power utility. So now we are looking at that for all the new upcoming industrial cities. The MADC will go for all plug and play underground uh, cables for your um, power, water, uh, even fiber, everything will be underground. So that way, electrical infrastructure also we are getting in. And also trying to chip in whether the, the, the new, new cities can have their own power uh, distribution uh, license. So we are looking at like this bulk drug bar coming up in Raigad and also the Mangav city, Talegav city, and Aur Aurangabad, Arik city. And also Bhutipuri, these five places we are trying to uh, impress upon the MERC and other like agencies to get that uh, power distribution license so that the power is also being uh, supplied at a very reasonable rate because that is also one of the main component for in the industry which are like uh, looking at power as one of the main raw material. For example, data center or battery recharging, battery, EV, they are all heavily power dependent. So there we also need to be doing that. Then sector specific, as I said, we are coming in with medical and diagnostic equipment park in Aurangabad and also typically electronics park in Ranjanga and also one will come in bio, like more like a genome valley. They're also planning to establish one such like a biological park in uh, more for uh, enzymes, not necessarily bulk drug, biopharmaceuticals, also close to Nasik. 
so that way and finally like all the 4.0 robotics internet of things that is also being looked at so we are also acquiring land close to taluja and kalapur where we are looking at uh, engineering hub and also hub for robotics and other thing and also tie cluster and uh, the state is also coming in with food processing uh, food parks in uh, aurangabad one that is been commissioned then we can also look at uh, another food parks in uh, konkan particularly in uh, digi uh, industrial area and also in nasik and finally the logistic is a main issue uh, particularly logistic parks or inland container depots or dry ports so jnbd is also looking at uh, developing uh, dry ports one in like uh, varda road nagpur another is in like sangli a third one is in jalnan fourth in fourth one is in uh, uh, i would say uh, nasik jalnan varda they are already almost in final completion so we are also trying to co uh, though it's been a jnbt project i am also trying to locate some land parcel for them in nasik and uh, sangli so that uh, this also can take up where more like an intern icd more like a dry port that people can like do all the procedures and typically they can ship do the shipment at jnpt or ppt uh, wherever like it's been done so this is the one area then and state also has come up with an uh, integrated logistic park policy and integrated uh, industrial area policy and integrated it township and also fintech policy so all the i would say emerging sectors and also um, trying to rope in uh, private players also to develop a smaller industrial parks where like uh, suppose people have i would say the investors should have an uh, choice to move on so there like you'll have an active competition among like various agencies then like even even trying to like benchmark their own uh, infrastructure uh, thing that way with that uh mahaparwana which were like more to do with isab doing business ultimately every system is in place and the business environment is in place then isab doing business is a much more thing which is going to be a game changer so the state is coming up already it's been like officially commissioned uh, mahaparwana which which like which like mandates uh, the approvals within uh, 48 hours and guarantees all the approvals uh, i would say the pre establishment and uh, commencement approvals within like whatever timeline been given the state is also looking at whether we should go for a i would say a statutory backing for this but mahaparwana will is going to be a game changer and this in the initial phase it's going to be for all the unit which are going to invest uh, 50 crore and above and this will be uh, the single window clearance will also be extended to district level and division level so this is one thing and uh, the plug and play is another thing third will be i would say uh, the maha jobs where the state is also trying to bridge bridge a gap between the uh, employers and the employees so where the state uh, mdc has recently launched maha jobs portal where we have close to more than 3 lakh people have enrolled and almost more than uh, almost close to 48000 jobs are been advertised so this will be running like a private employment exchange and uh, initial 2 to 3 years MDC will bear the expenditure uh, in providing the manpower to the company. So we are roping in a professional agency to run this portal. So the initial response is very good. And uh, finally, investor first. So anybody who is investing more than 50 crore is given a relationship manager and also relationship executive. So all the handholding, not only approvals in the MDC, but also the approvals which are due from other states, uh, other uh, agencies also been taken care of. once the mahaparwana is in place i think this this duty become this job become will be becoming like much much easier and uh, mdc is also going to launch a country desk a dedicated country desk for a uh, 10 trust countries where there will be a dedicated like uh, invest uh, i would i would say investment promotional consultant and also one person from uh, mdc and one person from the transnational trade association like uk ibc or maybe uh, us ibc so people will be also from there they can operate they also be given a uh, facilities like a uh, meeting room and other thing so the country specific proposals uh, will be also handled there and we will also trying to have a round table conference with consul generals and trade bodies so that very specific issues also solved that way uh, the state and the mdc is geared up i think hope the better days are ahead i think what you are talking about is what is a co-working space usually provide to a small mncs or or, or or a small organization you are providing that for an industries so uh, you want to set up an office come and talk to me and we will take care of land water your uh, your environment activities and all other stuff so really, really great job sir uh, 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 now uh, let me ask about magnetic master 2.0 now you have launched this in 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 the year 2020 
uh, year which is not very condu uh, conducive for businesses so we we really got hit by pandemic everything was locked down uh, how do you propose this uh, magnetic maharashtra 2.0 can revive and boost investment in the state i would i said like uh, the one is what exactly the ecosystem available with the state with a like, huge workforce huge skill workforce and huge vendor base and our state itself is a big market it's like a sub national market one thing secondly the policy ecosystem i would say we have a industrial policy and host of like more than 10 to 12 sector specific policies where like everything is been like the detailing is done everything is been done thirdly the land order problem i would say the peacefulness or maybe the social infrastructure i you would everyone would vows that no one can like match uh, the state of maharashtra particularly city of mumbai and we do not have any major uh, law and order issues as far as setting up of industries and other thing so with that with all this uh, when uh, our honorable chief minister uh, has like launched magnetic uh, maharashtra 2.0 in june so we started with like uh, this plug and play maha jobs also this uh, relationship manager and also land bank of 4000 only 40000 acres for the this plug and play and for the new uh, investment so we signed uh, mous at, at in three editions june we signed the mou with like 14 companies then another like in november with another uh, 15 companies and in december another 25 companies so totally 54 companies we signed mou to the tune of like 1 lakh uh, 12000 crores so during pandemic in like 6 months the state has mobilized investment to what uh, 1 lakh uh, 12000 crores this is basically these uh, mous are i would i would categorically say these mous are not mere ceremonial they are almost in the final stage of conversion and in out of like all the three mous more than 60% of the whatever proposals mou is signed they are either being uh, allotted land or either being uh, given offer either the people and some places the companies are also paid the money off money some places full money the more than 60 to 70% of the companies have already started mobilizing it i would say if not 100% and our conversion rate should be nothing less than 95% for this one and secondly during the normal course of business mdc during the past one year we had allotted land uh, to the for the investment worth around close to 15000 crore so both you put together at least it will come to around uh, almost 1.27 and with the fda for the past one year uh, the government of india declaring that it close to 78000 crore the state has already surpassed uh, 2 lakh uh, crore investment even during the pandemic so this has shown uh, the what exactly the trust uh, the investors both domestic and overseas have in our mind and uh, you can compare with other like i would say always with all due respect with other uh, states so we have done phenomenally well and we are optimistic and uh, with this all background and with the great leadership visionary leadership and with all the i would say plus 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 triple plus uh, with our state there are always a better states ahead I think uh, what you have done, the numbers shows itself, and you are so confident of getting around 95 percent of them uh, on the execution table. It it uh, says talks volumes about it. Now another uh, thing which you would like to ask is about uh, how do you promote you make Indian organization global, and and joint ventures are one of the key uh, things which helps uh, Indian organization to go global. Because what we have seen is there are a lot of international companies coming in India, but uh, Indian company becoming uh, global is, is is very limited numbers. Uh, so, how does uh, uh, MIDC help the state industries in collaborating with international organizations, in joint ventures, in any other international uh, partnership, which can make uh, the Atam Nirbhar as one of the key thought process of the country, uh, key thought process of the Prime Minister, and also the state to, to grow their organization bigger, to grow the industries of state industries bigger? I would say this one area. Uh... Uh, we would say we need to work more uh, though we have a like full-fledged marketing team we have a close to around uh, 20 to 30 people uh, working on this aspect particularly companies like uh, taiwan uh, japan uh, when they come to us uh, initially when they are grounding the investment the bigger the bigger thing people they normally come and dot the land the medium investment for it like for them it's a medium but for us that is again a big like 100 crore 200 crore company they initially they everyone wanted to test the market and uh, the ecosystem so they and also with uh, whatever like uh, though we are like our government 
i would say our country also has moved very much in ease of doing business so any like outsider um, feels comfort in having a local partner reliable partner so we do like associate like whenever like in the investment deliberations we do informally uh, link with them we also organize meeting like b2b meeting also with organizations like fiki cii and other uh, similar organization but i think we should do it on a much more on a like more like a uh, much organized way the state uh, though like mdc also can chip in but i would say the state has much bigger role to play because it's not necessarily the manufacturing but also the service sector tourism transportation logistics medical there are see there are lot of like avenues the people are uh, trying to come in uh, chip in uh, joint ventures so we need to have an uh, organized structure for uh, where like the data or maybe the xyz being referred need to be highly reliable because ultimately someone is putting the money so i think state is working on that but from mdc point of view if anybody is coming for that then of course we are uh, surely we are like trying ever we are taking help of ca and fiki and uh, also getting the vendor base and trying to ask them to meet of course business call only the company has to take there we we do not have much to intervene but we we can put up a platform that can we for that only i am just we are looking at uh, one maharashtra one search or unified search so we do not have a database of what exactly our msme what exactly our strength and what are the product line we have the state uh, we as part of the magnetic maharashtra we also declared that we will we will develop a single portal like unified search where entire sector specific particularly with some benchmark of somebody like doing a 1 crore or 2 crore turnover all will be mapped so what exactly the product line so anybody who is coming up will get to know geographically where exactly my vendors are where exactly my suppliers are so that one thing we have taken up i think maybe will take some time but we will surely do that but one point where like uh, our people also should go global there i think we are not done much i think that is one area where like state state can see this we look at thank you very much sir i think that is a good area to to, to really to if you can get all the uh, area uh, all the organizations all the industries in one place so that somebody is coming in india uh, or or in maharashtra and setting up an organization and he is looking for a supplier base he is looking for uh, his partners he get the, the match making that would help so thank you very much sir i think it's really pleasure to have you uh, 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 and thanks for the time i know you have i have a couple of more questions but i i understand you have uh, uh, a very uh, short time for this so thank you very much and really appreciate uh, to to come and share all your views about midc thank you very much sir. thank you so much jai hind jai maharashtra